Hello and welcome to Foiling 101 with Wanda and Katie, the Foiling Rock Ladies. <laughs> so the very first mo most important part that we're going to talk about today is PPE. So nail foil and uh, nail glue is kind of like a resin. Um, so you need PPE. You need to wear your mask. You need your goggles or just get a full mask. You can get these on Amazon. We'll be leaving links for everything. And you need some good gloves. These are a lot thicker 9 mil glove and that's what you need. Those thin gloves, um, the resin will come through or the nail glue will come through the glove. So you definitely want to wear a thicker glove. Some people double glove. I don't know how uh, effective that is. We just use the 9 mil um, and there will be a link in the description for those also. So it's very important to wear this while you're doing nail foiling and using nail glue. Hello, Wanda here. So this is a pile of supplies that we use for nail foiling. We've got our nail foil. There is a transparent holographic, which I think is probably my favorite style. It's easy release and it's very forgiving, uh, especially if you're a beginner. So I do suggest starting with this type of foil when you're learning. And then as you expand your horizons with the foil, the metallics, which are probably the most hard <laughs> and difficult to work with, um, you can use these as a beginner, but I do recommend um, using them in a specific manner, not as, you know, your whole project. Maybe use them as little accents, and I will show you that also today. So we've got the foil, then we have our nail foil glue. This one is Burano. And sorry, usually my box is open. Um, which is our preferred brand right now. And I want to say that in life, things change, products change, and we evolve. And so there will be times that we change the brands that we use, the lights that we use. Our recommendations will just fully change. And we will update you as we change. So this is Burano Nail Foil Glue. This is available in the store. Everything I'm showing here is available in the store, The Foiling Rock Lady, on Etsy. So you can pick these products up there. Um, there's also kits available, which include um, the basic kit. You get the transparent foil and the glue. You get a pair of standard gloves. You get uh, some... These are disposable eyeliner brushes, and we like to use these to apply the glue. Uh, when you're done using them, you can just toss them, and there's you know no mess, no fuss, no mess. They're also great for getting into little tiny corners, you know, like here and here, so you don't um, have to worry about using your product from the bottle. We don't recommend that. It usually uses too much glue, and too much is a problem. So these are micro swabs and these are great for cleanup. You also want to have some 91% alcohol handy for cleanup. It also neutralizes the glue and resin so you definitely want to have that on hand. Um, these are UV lights. Oh, I'm sorry, let me back up here. <laughs> this is a glue well or an ink well. You can use it for paint or glue. Um, there are four wells here and they are numbered. So when you're nail foiling, you will also be using other products sometimes like top coat or builder gel or other types of UV products um, while you're foiling and they're all clear. So then you're faced with this, which one is which, right, on your, in your uh, dish. So here there are numbers, I know they're hard to see, but there's a one and a two and a three and a four. And then there's also these channels that you can put your brush in so they don't tip, you know, they don't roll off while you're working. These are very handy to have um, when you're learning how to foil. You can also use the basic paint wells. I'm going to show you when it's dirty, but <laughs> these, the six well, you can use these also for the nail foil glues and different things. And then you can just number them like with a Sharpie, one, two, three, and then you 
you can know what's where. You know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So then the lights. These cure the glue. These are 12 LED, and the way you confirm that is there's 12 little LED bulbs in there. If there's 9 or 14, that's a little off. So sometimes it'll work with a 9, but a 9 doesn't generally cure the glue on rocks the way you want it to be cured. It works on other things, but on a rock, because the temperature of the rock is so cold, the surface is very cold. Um, when you use a heavier watt light than this 12 LED, it will wrinkle that glue instantly. And if it's not strong enough, and it, like if it's a 9 LED, um, it will never cure it enough so it'll stay gooey and sticky and you won't get a transfer at all. So 12 LED is the sweet spot uh, with curing nail foil on rocks. You can use other lights for the top coat and for the builder gel. But the nail foil glue, my only recommendation is 12 LED flashlights. I know in the past we talked about some other lights and I started with those lights, but troubleshooting over the years, now we know that the 12 LED is superior. Um, talked about those. Okay, burnishing brushes. So these are basically ink blending brushes and they let me see if I have one open here of course not. here's one okay these come in different colors in the shop so this is uh, the purple or pink anyways these um, once you apply your foil you use these to burnish it on the top and I'll show you these processes um, so you want to have some burnishing brushes on hand I have them in short handle or long handle. These are the micro swabs. And then also we have um, glue pens. You can now use glue pens, which do not require a light. I'm gonna start with those um, because this is ready to foil. So with the glue pens, they are for small little details. Maybe a word, a dot, a line, um, just little tiny notches, details, whatever. It is not for foiling something like this. You you need the regular nail foil glue for that. But if you want it to just add like little accent dots, bing, 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 then you can use that glue pen. Or just like if you wanted to do these lines right here, just you could use that glue pen. The glue pen takes an hour to dry. So be prepared to be patient if you use them. They come in six colors. The colors honestly don't matter because you're going to cover them up with foil. They will show through on the transparent foil though. So like this orange uh, peachy color here. If you want it to use a clear foil and really see that, you will need to use the white pen. All the others dry the color that they are. Okay, so I'm just going to use some of the metallic foil to show you the glue pen. I'm just gonna grab this blue right here. And you also wanna have a pair of scissors. Small detail scissors are really nice to use. Um, these are available in the shop too, aren't they cute? <laughs> and tweezers to pick up your foil. We gotta have cute stuff. I know, right? <laughs> tweezers. Because I don't know if about you, but I use the silicone mat, which is also another tool you should have. Um, it's hard to pick up foil off of that, so the tweezers help with that. So when the foil pen is dry, you basically lay your foil on it and pull it off just like the others, which I'm going to show you, but I just wanted to show you the pen first. So you can use your burnishing brush. And on the pen, you don't need to press super hard. And then you pull up. Awesome. And there's your transfer. So I do have other things on here. I'm just going to use this piece of foil for a couple doodles. And then you can watch these things come to life. Now these were done, like I said, about an hour ago. It 
if they're not dry enough, you will know because when you lift up your foil, it will take off. <laughs> the glue will come off on your foil. See, nice solid transfer you can see back there. And then in here I have some other, let me grab a different color, let me grab the green. Some little dots and stuff so you can see those. So like I said, the glue pen does require some patience and planning. So if you are doing dots and you have, want to use different colors, you need to plan that in strategy with your timing. So if you're working on here and you want purple here, blue here, yellow here, you need to give yourself enough room to use different color foils, otherwise you'll get those colors on the wrong place. If you aren't sure, do them separately. So do these dots, let them dry, foil them. Do these dots, let them dry, foil them. That's a long time, so you gotta plan it out because there's an hour dry time in between each foil with a glue pen. The glue pens are cool for people who want to use foil but do not have um, a light or have an allergy to it. So this is totally fun. Yeah. Love that green. Yeah, it's pretty. I think I missed this right here. Yeah. Okay, so that is the glue pen. We're going to move on to actual foil foiling on the rock. Get my foils out of here. Okay, gloves on. <laughs> so we're going to take some of the Barano nail foil glue. And we are going to pour it into the well here. And I'm actually going to fill two wells because I know that that rock has more um, than one well's worth of <laughs> Foiling to be done. Okay. I pre painted this with watercolor. So, okay, so sorry about that little weirdness there for a second. I forgot to spray my rock. So, we went out and sprayed, and we did that with this is a staple that I absolutely love, and we forgot to talk about. This is Rust Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Matte Clear. Love it, recommend it, highly recommend it over other sprays. It just works better with foil and watercolor. So, there you go. That's my professional opinion. <laughs> so, we're going to... Um, this was the first part. Okay. We prepped this rock by using watercolor. Um, we traced an image, then we painted with watercolor, lined with black Posca pen, Uni Posca 1MR. And now we are going to foil it. We're going to use, we sprayed it and then yeah, we sprayed it, let that dry. Now we're going to foil it with Verano nail foil glue. And you just want to pick up a little bit and then twist your brush to get it to your rock so that the little bead doesn't drip on the way over. You know what I mean? So to get it over there, you twist, 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 drop in the middle. If you drop it in the middle, it's easier to spread it out. So now you can spread it out to the edges. And you don't want to go over the black line. Stay inside the black line, but go up to the black line. Does that make sense? So if you don't go up to it, your edges won't be foiled. And I'm guilty of this. I miss my edges a lot. I do too. <laughs> Y'all have heard me. <laughs> Gotta redo the edges. And that's kind of what's cool about the new pen too. So say you walk by after you've done, <laughs> done your rock and you see, oh my gosh, those edges, I didn't get those edges. Then you can use the pen, walk off, go do something else. And you know, six hours later, come back and pop a little foil on those edges and you didn't have to use a light. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is for sure. Next section, I'm going to do two, um, but I'm not going to let them touch. Does that make sense? Okay, so what I'm going to do is fill this one in. 
If you are not comfortable as a beginner doing more than one section at a time, that is completely understandable and actually recommended that you do them separately. But I got ahead of myself there, so we're going to do two sections, but do not cross the line. See how I left the line there? Nail foil glue is self-leveling. Now you put your uh, brush down in the little well so it doesn't roll off. And another uh, tool that I forgot to mention are lighter torches. These are normal like cigar lighter torches or creme brulee torches, cooking kitchen torches work well too. Um, they usually come with some sort of lock for protection so make sure that it's unlocked. Um, you're about halfway with your gas. Press down and then, so because the glue is a resin, you want to get the bubbles out otherwise those bubbles will show on your foil when you're foiling once the bubbles are out you'll have this nice glass like surface see that beautiful glossy that's what you're looking for now it's time to cure I need to zoom in a little bit but I don't want to mess the thing up hold on just a second Okay, sorry about that. I had to zoom in off camera. Okay, so we are zoomed in. We're going to cure now with our 12 LED flashlight. You got to move your glue out of the way because you don't want to cure it while you're curing your rock. Make sure you put your hand up because that little bit of light will cause a skin on the top of your glue in the dish. So now cure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten you want to count to 30 pretty much 30 seconds and then test it with your glove uh, to see if it's tacky and not gooey or slimy slick you know you'll feel the difference about 30 seconds and it can use some more time so we're going to go in a little closer you also when you are first curing your glue you want to start about six inches up maybe even farther and then if it's not wrinkling, come in toward it. And then if you need to super cure it like we do right now, just come right above it, hover. And you've got cured glue. All right, then we're going to pick a nail foil. And I'm just gonna use this top one, the discs. We're gonna cut a piece off with our handy dandy scissors. Handy dandy so pretty I think those are embroidery scissors but I loved them so much <laughs> okay so we're gonna use the discs foil now the foil obviously has two sides one side will transfer the other side will not and I do recommend before you get to this stage you do the tape test to find out which side goes on the rock tape test you take a piece of scotch tape and your foil so we'll use this as a sample foil you apply the tape to the foil, pull it off. If there's no foil on it like that, that's the wrong side. So I'm gonna turn it over, test the other side, okay? See how that transferred the foil on there? So you know that this side goes on the rock. So just keep note of that and you'll know which side to put on the rock. If you need, these are hard to tell on these, tra on these transparent ones. If you need to continually um, make note of it. You can write on the outside of the foil on the back side. You can write on this with like a black sharpie Write this side out or up or whatever, but don't write on the other side because then it will transfer onto your rock You don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to do both of these the same discs and I'm going to use the burnishing brush To apply soft pressure now if I want it to get around those edges and they like on darker foils and metallic sometimes these edges are hard to transfer you can take like a pointy object just don't scrape okay very gently go around your edges just like that and that will help those to lay down where the glue is there okay great tip thank you this is a rhinestone picking tool it has that awesome end pointy end on it that I use for everything 
and on, on the other end it has a wax tip that picks up rhinestones like a dream so that's also another tool that I use for everything all right so then you're gonna pick up your foil you can use tweezers or your fingers whatever works for you it's real hard sometimes to grab the foil so just make sure you have your tweezers handy pull the foil off and then you have this gorgeous beautiful transferred foil so that is basic nail foiling um, we're gonna go through this rock so you guys get a good idea about different um, techniques so um, you can also use a warmer uh, for your rock okay so if you're working on nail foils in the winter um, or cold months even even in the summer and your air conditioner is good like my uh, your rocks will be cold your glue will be cold and both of those things cold equals disaster so um, I do recommend the um, mug warmers to keep your glue you can uh, USB plug this in set your glue on there keep it warm set your top coat on there keep it warm or you can set your rock on there and let it warm for about 20 minutes and then you or uh, you could work with it under your rock even you know to keep your rock warm highly recommended um, if you're having trouble with spots and bumps and stuff now you'll notice on here there's a few little bumps in there but nothing not a big deal those are normal. Those are pores in the rock. So don't panic if you see that. Everybody gets them. I don't care who you are. And the top coat, the sealer will help. Yeah, the sealer that. will um, definitely get rid of that. All right, so we'll move on to do some more foiling. And we're just going to use different um, patterns of transparent foil on this uh, rock here. So, so we're going to do the same technique, start in the center and pull it around to the points, center, pull, okay, pull it into the point, torch. And to cure, move your glue. Start at it. Look at the neon. Isn't that pretty? Mm -hmm. On the flower. Those are the neons. The gouache. That's in this drawer also. Okay, so here we have a different uh, print on the foil. We're going to put that here. And I'm just going to use the edge so that I can use this other part over here. Pay attention though when you're foiling not to reuse a part that you've already used because you will pull your glue off the rock if it touches plastic without foil on it. It'll pull that glue and paint and everything under it off the rock. So. There's that image, so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I love it already. I love that one. <laughs> so pretty. You can also tell like if you're getting good transfers by looking at the foil and seeing if there's any like foil left behind, you know that you're having some trouble with your transfer and you need to troubleshoot it a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go through here and foil the rest of this. Same thing, we're gonna speed this up because you don't need to sit here for an hour. <laughs> See you back in a second. Okay, so we paused through that so you didn't have to sit through it. So those have all been glued and cured and foiled. And I will show you how to use top coat on that. Now these two leaves down here, I'm going to use green metallic, full metallic foil. And then I'm going to show you how to remove foil with alcohol. Okay, so you apply the glue in the same manner. I like to start in the center and work my way around the edges. Mm 
Again, make sure you have sprayed your rock, uh, especially if you're using watercolor. Make sure you spray after your paint is dry before you foil. Uh, we don't sometimes on our tutorials on our live tutorial spray because for time but it's highly recommended so you don't move your paint around okay then we're going to torch just like before and cure I'm going to start away so I can avoid dimples and such which we get anyways from the pores and the rocks but Hopefully they won't be too bad because they will show on metallic. Okay. Then the metallic, you're going to do this just the same way. Lay that on there. And burnish with your burnishing brush. I'm going to show you on the other leaf how to get some detail in it by not putting the glue on the veins. Okay, and then you pull the foil and then you you're going to pull it very slow. You're going to lift up and look. See the green? Let me see if I can get it to focus. See these green specks that are left on that? You want to lay that back down. And go at it again. And try to get those to lay down. So that you don't have little spots left on your leaf. On your rock. Sometimes it's unavoidable. That's still a pretty dang good transfer. So we're going to keep working it until it's completely transferred don't lift it all the way off until you're confident and comfortable with the transfer once you are lift it off and you have this oh. gorgeous <laughs> full metallic thing so on the other one here I'm going to show you a little trick to get some details without having to use 500 different foils so Instead of starting in the middle, start around the outer edges and stay off of, like this vein right here, we're going to skip that with the glue. And then that will give us some ridges in the foil. And those are intentional to give it the look of a leaf, you know, to make it textured like a leaf. You want to be kind of light handed with your glue when you're doing this because it can just all roll in there, you know. Torch. Cure. So you can see there the neon center. <laughs> we didn't hit that with the glue, so that is going to have no foil on it, which will show you cannot, you know. You can touch it up with black or leave it as is, but it will give you some different values. Okay. So on this one, you want to press down 
because you have edges in there now where the vein of the leaf is. That's so Bring cool. that up so you can see it. And then lift off. A perfect transfer except for the vein. Oh, no, we got some out here. Yeah, good. So cool. So here's the vein. You can see it left on the foil. That is very cool. <laughs> then you have your foiled leaf. Um, so say you want to remove uh, some foil. Let me make a little sample spot on my tester rock here. Or actually, I'll just remove it from these. So, you get a little bit of alcohol, 91%. I'm just going to dump it on my mat. Silicone mats are awesome for that. Just dump it and wipe. <laughs> so you get some alcohol in there. You don't want it like that. It's too much. So you just want it damp-ish. You know what I mean? Like, about like that. Then you rub it on top of the foil that you want to remove from the glue. And the glue will stay behind. But what that does is it allows you to clean up your edges if you want to. And then you can, you won't be able to reuse that glue, but you can double foil. You can foil over top of it again and not, you know, have nasty edges or whatever. So that's how you can clean off an boo If you've gone outside of the line, you know, you can just take off part of it too. So say so you just want to remove a portion of the foil that you're working with. You can be detailed with it. So it just takes off the parts where you want to work. So these micro swabs are pretty cool for doing detailed cleanups. See there? definitely like that. Those are cute little flowers too. We're going to have to do those. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we also have this tool. It is a blade, a micro cutting blade scraper. We call it a scraper. See the blade there? Okay. It's very sharp. Be very careful. But you can say you've made a mistake and you want to clean it up or get rid of it. You can scrape it off of your rock. Super easy works really great and gone problem gone um say your rock has I think this rock does some spots on it that you don't like some dark spots or some boo-boos you can remove it with the scraper blade you've had a little dot of glue fall out there you know anything little liner a little paint a little purple they're awesome <laughs> yeah you Everyone can scrape off what you don't want on there very easily also, the sanding blocks work a charm. <laughs> Wasn't going to get into all these things, but this is part of the deal here. Yeah, then you can sand it down and it's back to brand new. Okay. Okay, so next steps are to seal or touch up. You're going to touch up your liner at this point. You want to go round and give it a nice finish so you line all your parts that you want to you don't have to touch up but I think the touch ups is where it all ties together you know it really tidies up any foil that's you know gotten away from you that you didn't that you couldn't clean up with alcohol or the blade. The touch up helps with that. And it's super fast. I mean, it's basically just relining. I just use the Posca pen or a brush and ink.
Okay, also you can write color paint on top of foil. When I say write, it has to be a paint pen um, or a liner pen. You can go on top of foil before it's sealed. It will damage the foil so you can't go back from that <laughs> once you do it. So right here, this is yellow Posca 1MR. I'm just going to draw in similar uh, lines, like so. It's kind of the wrong way, but oh well. <laughs> I did it backwards. Okay, let me tell you, before this dries, you can, just with water, because, you know, it's water base acrylic you can take that off of the foil before it dries yeah, so that's a cool that a that's a cool save good good tip okay so once it's dry though it does damage the foil so you can't take it off and if you pressed really hard it scratches the foil so we're going to try this again with our there we go feel dyslexic right now getting you know <laughs> trying to do it okay then the other side with the detail that we made there the little indention we're going to go ahead and change that to yellow so it'll kind of match yay cool so see either way is good and you can do like little um dots top dots things you know of that nature okay also you can do details um with the gel pens the white, gold, silver, whatever color you want to. <laughs> um, you can, you know, do de details around your work. If I already did that side. <laughs> You can do as many or as little, you know, do doodles. You can write words, whatever, whatever is on your heart. I don't know why I like threes. <laughs> All right, we'll call that good. I like those little details. That is white gel pen available in the store as well um, okay top coat this is Gelixer top coat <laughs> that I have it comes in a humongous refill size or the small bottle like this um, if you are going to use it like I do as a sealer or a top coat on your artwork I do recommend that large size but if you're just using it to seal you know a little like one job or a little piece of something then I do recommend just the bottle also Delixir the bottle that it comes in is trash it will leak everywhere so I do recommend getting a few of the because this is like half or one third of a of a whole bottle so you'll need one or two of these bottles to transfer the deluxe or top coat into this they also have to be black so no light gets in because it's UV based light will cure it even the lights in your room over time will cure it okay so uh, make sure you have alcohol handy when you're working with these products um, I'm gonna clean the top of this bottle it's kind of gnarly. We're just going to take a paper towel, alcohol, and clean it up so I don't get it everywhere. Then I'm going to pour it everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to get a new brush and since I'm done with the glue I'm going to toss that brush. Now I have two wells here that I haven't used and they are four and two. So I'm going to remember that four and two are top coat. It's 
and if you can't remember, you can label your the dish. The dish is reusable, by the way, if you want to. They're disposable, but if you want to use it again, you can cure them <laughs> with the light and then pop out the, pla the top coat and glue. You can just pop them out with, you know, tweezers, whatever. Pull them right out of there. So, top coat is pretty much just like the glue. You're going to paint it on top of your artwork. You can do your whole rock if you want to and seal it just like resin. You could skip the resin part because top coat is resin. It's quick curing resin. It cures in about 60 seconds versus 5 minutes for UV resin um, or 24 hours for 2 part resin. So of course me being Mrs. Impatient, <laughs> I always opt for top coat because I'm that girl. <laughs> And I'm a two-parter. Yep, Katie likes to go all the way. <laughs> Let's go all the way. Haha, <laughs> we're not on live. They can't boot us. <laughs> so I am going to fill in this whole flower with this top coat. And then just around the edges of the outer part of it. Like that. I'm going to fill all this in, and then I'll be back to show you how we're going to cure it. Okay, top coat has been applied everywhere. I'm going to torch. Top coat doesn't, I mean it does, the bubbles do come out, but not as great as with glue and other resin. But, so this is pretty much what it looks like. We only covered... The artwork and my signature down there so let me show you the edges if you can see them I don't want to tip it because it'll pour let's see how nice and glass it is now I'm gonna cure this in a big UV nail lamp this is an 84 watt joy T uh, lamp on just a second uh, this is Joy T UV LED nail lamp, 84 watt, I believe. It used to have information on the back, but it is rubbed off. What you're looking for is the lights inside of your lamp. You want those to come as far down to the ridge as possible. Um, and then you want as many lights in there as you can get, right? That gives you better coverage, um, better curing of a rock. And then... If you are doing a rock and you have resined the whole thing down the sides and whatnot, you're going to want to lift it up and, you know, balance it on something like so, and then put your um, light on top of that, and that will cure the sides. This, this thing's a little bit too tall. You want it a little bit uh, lower than that, otherwise it'll touch the sides of the light. So, okay, we're going to put this in here. And we're just, because this is top coat, we're only going to do 60 seconds. So, we will hit the 60 seconds here and let that go. So, on these bigger lights, there are usually three settings or more. Uh, there might be two, but most of the time there's three or four. Um, this is basically your power, and it's spread out between these numbers. So, if you use 120 seconds... That is the lowest setting. I know it seems like it's the highest, but it's actually the lowest power. So that is your least aggressive but longest cycle. So they use that that's like 30% power for two minutes. Okay. 60 seconds is 50% power for one minute. 30 seconds is full power for 30 seconds feel me so that's how that works so if you need a quick strong cure you hit that 30 seconds some lights say 15 seconds and that's a really strong cure this light will ruin your nail foil glue on rocks it works beautiful on your nails if you want to do your nails you can put your nail foil glue on pop your fingers in there and the glue will cure perfectly I think it's because your body is 98.6 degrees. The rocks are about 45, 55 degrees. They, they're very cold, <laughs> like they came out of a refrigerator. Rocks maintain a very cool temp. 
uh, unless they're outside in the hot sun, then they're nice and warm. So you can do that too. You can keep them in the sunshine before you work on them. But anyways, you, the warmer your products are, the better your uh, glue is going to cure. All right, that's done curing. We're going to move that off there. And look at our beautiful foiled rock with a nice set cured surface. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Rock Foiling 101. That's the basic technique to foil rocks. Okay, now that we've foiled our rock, um, we're going to do a little troubleshooting. So say you come across the wrinkles that I was talking about in your glue. Sorry, I can... I think I can make it wrinkle. <laughs> we'll try. So you're going to, you've applied your glue, right? You've torched it. You've done all the things that you're supposed to do. Hang on, I'm going to put it in this light to see if it'll wrinkle it. Hopefully it will. Yeah, it did. Okay, I'll show you what wrinkle <laughs> is so that you know how to avoid it. So don't use the big light or it will wrinkle. See the big wrinkles in the middle? Oh, I don't know if you can see them on there, but they're the the wrinkles right, right down there. the middle. You yeah. Right Let me cure this more because I have to cure it before I can put foil on it. But we'll use some metallic foil on there so you can absolutely see those wrinkles. So to avoid the wrinkles, you're going to want to make sure that your glue and your rock are warm. And, you know, the more prepared you are, the better results you will have with your foil. So this is what wrinkles look like. And this is a mild wrinkle, actually. So, oh, see, it didn't even cure it. <laughs> so it that's funny because now if you wanted to keep curing, you could pop your light on top of that and it will cure through the bar layer carrier film. Sorry about that. Um, that's too funny. I didn't care. Okay, so here you've got the cured. There's the wrinkles. So you can see see all those weird wrinkles in there. So that's basically your light is too strong. And that happens from cold glue coming into contact with hot, strong light. Now your flashlight can do that as well if your glue is too cold because then it inadvertently makes your light too strong so you know when you're curing if you see these bubbles it really really usually means that your light is too strong that could mean your products are too cold there's also another issue sometimes like you saw with this one your foil doesn't transfer at all um, it can either be that your product is under cured you need to cure it some more or that the lights in your torch are low so this is a low battery versus a full battery. <laughs> so you can definitely, um, if you're having trouble with your foil transferring, um, change your batteries. Highly recommended. If you're missing a light in your torch, if, you, if the lights are burnt out, you need to replace the light, the flashlight, the whole thing. It's too crazy to try to replace a bulb in these little flashlights. Sometimes you can do it in the bigger lights, but they're more expensive than it is to replace the flashlight or the, the nail dryer. So if your machine is, you know, a $200 nail dryer machine, then possibly it'd be less expensive to just replace a bulb. But in this case, it's not. So to replace the batteries in your flashlight, this flashlight and this flashlight are available in my Etsy store and they both have the same inner cartridges not interchangeable but they have the same uh, what are those called the mm, I call the, them innards <laughs> the innards are the same anywho <laughs> the um, batteries come out like so and then you just want to pop the next ones back in oops watch the glove pop those back in there make sure they're all connected and then this part with the dent in there the dent not the nipple 
<laughs> nipple goes inside the carrier housing. This goes down in there. Then this you want to make sure comes into contact with the dent. Twist on. Make sure it's nice and tight. Also, your this end will come off. So you can replace those bulbs, but I'm telling you, they're too expensive. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then check for light, and you're good to go. And that's how you change the batteries. Your torch, if you try to turn it on and, you know, nothing's coming out, check to make sure your gas is on. If you're still not getting anything in there, you're going to need to fill it with butane which usually happens in the bottom of the torch and I'm not going to go through that because um, each torch is different and it's kind of a hassle so if you don't know how to fill a butane lighter you can go to any smoke shop and they can show you that okay so that is the end of how to foil a rock 101 we will be doing a future video so it may or may not be out already by the time you're watching this video on advanced foiling techniques so some of those are double foiling um, if you're doing a lot of different foils um, on a project and they're you know all different designs kind of we can go over um, how to lay those out and how to plan that out and metallic foils these babies they are hard sometimes to deal with so we will be going over some tips and tricks on how to get a good transfer so thank you so much for watching today Katie and Wanda out peace bye bye bye